All right, so welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, we're doing our Euros tier list with national team football, going through all 24 nations of the Euros. Now, keep in mind, guys, this is just a uh, tier list. This isn't our actual predictions. You know, we're, in, we're going by the highest potential for all 24 of these nations. We're going to do one agreed tier list with national team football. So national team football, man, how are you doing? And are you excited for this? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing good, and uh, I'm excited. Um, I can't wait yeah, for the Euros to finally begin. Yeah, that's uh, that's good to hear. So uh, let's before we start, let's go explain the categories, to, uh, tiers to you guys, so that everyone understands what it is. So favorites, that's easily, you know, we expect them to win. Contenders is like they'll compete, they'll probably make a semis. They probably can't win. Outsiders like a country that we think could maybe win it, but is probably not favored to win. Dark horse is like. There's really no, they're going to make it far, but they really don't have a good chance to win. Round 16 max, they're just going to make the round 16. At the group stage, they're just here for just to participate. <laughs> they're just here for vibes, basically. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, anyways, I think we should get started. Uh, we should start. So, we're going to go in uh, group by group order. So, we're going to start with Germany, man. So, Germany. Um, for me, I'm going to say Germany's a contender. I like the Germany team. Their team is solid. The attack is great. Midfield is great. The only concern I have is a defense. I don't think the defense is that great. So, do you agree with me, National Football? Yes. All they're, right. Um, yeah, they're, I mean, Germany on home soil is always a contender. Um, but I don't think they'll they'll win the whole thing. Yeah. But they have improved like, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, fast improved. under Nagelsmann. Yes, Nagelsmann. And yeah, players still got four. Let's quickly go over real quick. Florian Warts. Um, obviously, you got um, Tony Cruz, you got John Ta, Neuer as well. There's a lot of players in this Germany team that we can mention. You know, these are like kind of like the notable uh, ones coming through, young, promising players and important ones. Okay, Hungary for me, I think they're a dark horse team. I really like Hungary. They've been so solid in the last couple of, of tournaments. And remember, this is a team that when you give them a difficult group, they defy the odds. Defy the odds. I mean, look what they did in the Nations League. Look what they did in the last Euros. Like this team has been so good under Marco Roisi. Yeah, they're a, a clear dark horse, uh, a great manager, good cohesion, and have proven to be capable of competing and competing with and even beating some of Europe's best. Yeah, and yeah, Shobazai, um, you know, Kirk is, there's a lot of talented players, so, Salai, I think so. Yeah, okay, let's move on to Scotland. Hmm, Scotland is tough. I'm, I'm torn here, national team, between round of 16 maps and group stage. I uh, can you, I need, I probably need to. Mm. Yeah, I feel like I feel like for me the Scotland team is better than the one in 2020. Would you agree? Yeah, one hundred percent. So yeah, I think this time around, I think this time around, round of sixteen is more doable than last time. Obviously, players like McTominay that you got, uh, they've been amazing. My only issue with Scotland is a striker. I, the striker is not good. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a bit troubling that they're relying so much on a midfielder to score their goals. Yes, and yeah, so that that is also true. And remember, uh, qualifiers in the tournament is very different because this group is pretty competitive. So I like, with all due respect, the qualifier group is not going to be as easy as this one. So, you know. Yeah, and uh, also, I mean, Scotland were pr has were pretty bad in the later stages of the qualifiers and uh, in the March yeah. uh, friendly window. Yeah. But they can and reach yeah. around the 16. Oh, yeah, yeah, Scotland for me. And like I said, this could be history for them. Make the first ever knockout stage in this year's Euros. That'd be it's amazing. It's crazy that they've never, ever done it before. Not even yeah. at a World Cup when they were good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to Switzerland. Uh, I think they're also round of 16 max because they're in uh, in really bad form. Even though they are like, um, on paper, they are like a dark horse, arguably outsider. But in their current form, you cannot place them higher than the round of 16. And I don't even yeah. think they'll make it that far, but they can make the round of 16. Yeah, honestly, um, for Switzerland, it's I'll be honest with you, it's round of 16 or group stage exit. I don't see anything in between. Yeah, um, I agree. Yeah, because Switzerland for me, they have just been shocking ever since the World Cup. You know, I I feel like they're just not they're just defensively sh really shambles. That that's really weird because typically they're very good defensively. I think, right? Yeah. They're so it's just really sad. And they've also been struggling to score. Yeah. 
Nothing. Yeah, I think if, if there's any saving grace for Switzerland, at least they have two very good goalkeepers coming into the Euros, like Sommer and obviously uh, Kolbal. They're very good shot stoppers. And um, I'm, I'm doing it. Has been doing well too. Yeah, uh, but like I said, there's only so much your goalkeeper can do. <laughs> you know. So. Yep. Okay, let's move on to Spain. I mean, I think it goes without saying. Spain is a um, for me. I'm going to put Spain contender. I don't think they're a favorite just because I feel like Spain for me. Kind of what I said with uh, I just feel like for me the striker issue with Spain is a big problem because I don't really trust Morata, uh, and um, I don't think Morata is going to be that great now. Hosalu, believe it or not, he's been so he's been good for Real Madrid. I wouldn't be surprised he has a spot in the Euros and he might no, come clutch for them. But he, I mean, he has to make it. He's like a, a super sub. Yeah, um, but I, I think Spain are outsiders, not contenders. Ooh, what I makes just, you think yeah. outsiders, not contenders? Yeah, I mean they're just not good enough. Um, I mean th they have improved a little bit under De La Fuente, but um, at the 2022 World Cup they were I mean round of 16 in the tw at the last Euros they did sneak to the semifinals, but they only won one game in 90 minutes. Um. I think I, I can't. I mean, Spain are good, but uh, I can't place them in the same category as Germany. I, I hold Germany as uh, better than Spain. So, but mm. yes, Spain are outsiders, in my opinion. Okay, that, that that's fair. I mean, maybe maybe you're on to something because I, I at first I was like no, but after hearing your arguments, I'm like, okay, you know what? They could be outsider. Uh, I think that they're in the hover. They're in the borderline. Would you say like they're in the borderline of contender? I mean, sure. Yeah, you can say that. Oh. But I mean, they've okay, been yeah. favorites for like I've heard them been uh, tipped as fav among the favorites for every single major tournament in the last decade, at least mentioned among them, and they've just never done anything. Yeah, and yeah, for Spain. Well, I mean, to, to be fair, they are Nations League champions, Winners. so that's yes, that's a thing that makes you. I mean, you could uh, that helps them, but. Um, I don't know. The Nations League is an older tournament. I, st I still <laughs> don't think Spain can be as highly as Germany. Yeah, and um, um, one last thing before we move on, because we're spending too much time here. Uh, Spain, uh, they have a lot of young talent that are coming through, like Kubarsi, Yamal, uh, for me, Lopez. Like, the amount of young talent they have is insane. Um, so, let's see how these players can do. So, yeah, and then Croatia, for me, man, I'm going to put the round of 16. I feel like, for me, the Croatians just normally perform well in the Euros. I know defensively they're very good. Uh, but the attack is just worrying. Um, would you agree, National Football? Um, I don't know. I'd place them in like dark horse or outsiders. Um, I mean, Croatia have a history of performing badly in the qualifiers, but rising up for major tournaments. They do have some aging players, but that's a complete moot point as long as their aging players are still good. So I, I, I definitely favor Croatia more than Switzerland and Scotland. Uh, I think they could be should be a. I mean, I don't know if you could call them a dark horse since they <laughs> reached the final of the Nations League and won bronze at the World Cup. So I, but maybe it's bizarre to put them in the same category as Spain too. But I think between outsiders and dark horses is where Croatia belongs. Yeah, actually, you know what? I think I, I can agree with your point actually because Croatia, for me, like even defensively, are so good. And remember, in tournaments, it's about defense, defensive football. You know, especially in knockout stage. So. I do. I, I like if we put it this way. I, I I think I agree with you. They have better chance to make it farther than you know Switzerland and Scotland. So, okay. Uh, next up it is Italy. Uh, Italy for me. Hmm. I don't know what to make of Italy, man. I feel like Italy for me could flop this tournament, but also could do well. I think the highest though is like a quarterfinals. I don't see them as semis for me. Yeah, agreed. I think. Um... Yeah, I mean, outsiders or dark horse, I'm fine with either, which is a bit okay, odd, because since they are title holders, but this they aren't yeah. great. Yeah, um, let, let's put them dark horse because I don't actually dark horse is a bit of a. I don't think we should put dark horse. Actually, no, yeah, I, th I think outsiders. outsiders. I mean, okay, a title holder can yeah. never be a dark horse, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, Croatia. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention the, the players coming through. I'm trying to mention players for every nation. So Croatia obviously got uh, Modric. This will probably be Modric's last tournament. And for Italy, of course, you have a lot of good players. Like, the midfield's amazing. Uh, but once again, the striker. The striker is still big. 
Oh, did he ever do up and coming stuff? I think his name is Rogari. He's been good, I heard. So he might it's replace Jiren Mobley. Uh, but yeah, for Italy, man, as I said, this team doesn't look as good as they were the last years. I think you would agree, right? Uh, yeah, I agree. Okay, next up it is Albania. Mm. Um, I think for Al yeah, I think for Albania it's probably group stage. Um, they can make a round of sixteen. I think round of sixteen is doable, uh, but it's probably gonna. It's it's not really expected. It's gonna uh, it's gonna come as a surprise. I don't um, see them making the sixteen at all. Their group is too tough. I, I think yeah. they'll lose every you know the game, thing, but with their heads up high. Yeah, you know, I think I think if they were in a different group, they would be they would have a better chance. Would you agree? Of course. Yeah, so it's it's a it's sad to see Albania. Like you know, they have the Slaveno, their coach. He's been an amazing job. Um, and then obviously they have they have a lot of good players on the team. You know, they score a lot of bangers of qualifiers. You know, and I like the goalkeeper Strakosha. He's a he's an underrated keeper in my opinion. So let's see how much they can how much Albania can do. Okay, let's move on to uh, uh, England. In, I mean, this is I mean I think it goes without saying. England are favorites. Yes, along with uh, another team, which we'll get to later. Yeah, I mean, England for me, man, the amount of depth this team has is ridiculous. Like, you can make an argument, them in another country have probably the best depth in Europe. Like, like the attackers, the midfielders, the defense. The only thing that's holding England back is they haven't really proven, they haven't really shown up in the major tournaments when it comes to those big games. That's probably the only criticism I have. <laughs> so, I mean, you would agree nationally, football, right? Uh, yeah, they. I mean, they weren't bad against France in the World Cup, despite losing. And I mean, they only lost on penalties to Italy in the final. So, uh, I mean, that that's a val valuable experience there. And there's no doubt that England are one of the big favorites. Yeah. Okay. Moving on to Denmark. Um, I'll be honest with you, Denmark. Uh, they. they just, I don't know what happened. Ever since the World Cup, they, this team just looks. They don't look as cohesive and as as energetic. It looks slow, lethargic. And the only thing I have going for Denmark is ha uh, Hoy Rasmus Hoyland. He's the only one that I think can turn. I think he's the one that I'm expecting to turn up. The rest of the players, I'm not sure. I mean, I know Eriksson's there. He's been good. I know Casper Schmeichel, but I don't know. This Denmark team just doesn't feel the same. I'm going for for me, man. I'm putting around a 60 max. Yeah, I agree with that. They're in a bit of a, a slump. If um, if they live up to their full potential, they're very much a dark horse, and it is possible that they they will break that trend during the Euros. But uh, for now, there's I don't really see any reason to think that. So, round of sixteen max is the way to go. All right. Uh, next up, it is Serbia, and unfortunately, I I have to put Serbia on the group stage. It pains me to do this. Defend their attack is amazing. They have so many good players. Mitrovic, Vlahovic, uh, Kostic, Tadic. The defense is so bad. Defense I mean, is so bad. I, I think they will finish third in their group and be eliminated, but I still think you've got to put them in round of 16 max. I mean, they definitely can reach the round of 16. It wouldn't really be a crazy upset if they did that. I don't even think well, you can that at all. Yeah, actually, you know what? Okay, you know what? You're right. You're right. Uh, but... They're gonna let's put it this way: they're either gonna barely make the round of sixteen, or they're gonna go out of the group stage. I think we can yes, agree with that, right? Definitely, yeah. <laughs> Serbia, yeah. They're. It's a shame that they can't live up to their potential because their squad is really good. Yeah, and uh, hopefully we can see them in a, a knockout stage because I don't think we've seen this in a knockout stage at independent nation, unless I'm wrong here. Uh, I believe you're right. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to uh, Slovenia now. Slovenia for me, guys. I think this is one team a nation that I think people are sleeping on the Euros. Because remember, this nation has all block and goal. They have Sesko as a striker. And defensively, they're good. Now, I think the only thing that's holding Slovenia back is the fact that they haven't been in the Euros for such a long time. Because I correct me if wrong, the last time they were in the Euros, I think it was 2000, I think. Yeah. Or was it, it was like. So, it was 2000. Yeah. So, Slovenia for me, I think they have the capabilities to be a dark horse. Um. But well, I mean, what do you think? And, and what do you think? I'm actually curious. Uh, they're, they're not a dark horse, but they can definitely reach the round of 16. So that's the tier I think they belong in. Yeah, I 
I think they have a dark horse capabilities, but I think it's gonna be it's gonna be it's, it might be a bit too much because they haven't really because it's gonna be too it's it, it, we'll see, the experience might get to them you know the, the occasion so yeah but I do think they can um I think they'll I think they can I think they have the best chance of yeah, um, I mean, when you say they have the best chance to make a, those teams no oh, okay <laughs> I give Denmark and Serbia better odds. Of reaching the last 16 than Slovenia, but I still think I mean, Slovenia are definitely capable of reaching the last 16, they're not a bad team, yeah, 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 Slovenia, yeah, so yeah, okay, let's move on to Poland. Um, I think it goes without saying they're a group stage, I don't even think yes. there's much to discuss here, <laughs> correct, especially uh, since it's such a extremely competitive group, yeah, uh, Poland for me, yeah, sorry, uh, Lewandowski. Now there is one player that I think could ha be break could be huge for Poland. The Euros, Samaski. I think he's a good, talented player. But uh, let's be real: the Poland is not going to do much. The Euros at France. I think this goes without well saying. France are obviously favorites. Um, the squad they have is unbelievable. The depth, um, the attacking depth they have, the defense, the midfield. I'm interested to see how I'm interested to see how because remember I think a lot of players have retired since World Cup. Like I think um, Loris is retired. I think Veron is retired. Benzema's retired, I think. Who else is retired for France? Hmm, I'm not sure. I don't I don't think Giroud has retired, but it feels like he has. But he, you know, he just keeps delivering <laughs> despite his age. Yeah, so 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 it'll be interesting to see how France does with the younger team, you know, and obviously Pog was that pretty much out of the question. So, you know, we got like the midfield Chiomeni and Bappe, you know, and these kind of players, and yeah, and Bappe, man, you better charm this Euros because you were bad in the last Euros. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, yeah, moving, on uh, moving on to Netherlands. Moving on to Netherlands. Netherlands for me. It's, it's tough to have a read on this team because I feel like Netherlands for me, I feel like this team, kind of what I said with uh, Italy in particular, I feel like this team can be a flop, but also can maybe make a quarters. So I, I don't know because I like the defense of this team. I think defensively mm. are good. It's just attack I mean, was not great in my France point. beat them 4 0 in the qualifiers. Well, it is qualifiers. That was his first game uh, in charge, Kuman. So, you know, uh, the second game was made more respectable. You have to admit that. The one in the uh, Netherlands. Uh, yeah, but they still lost at home. But yeah, I mean, the Netherlands are. I mean, I, I think they will be eliminated in the last 16, but they can definitely reach the quarterfinals and it would have been upset. So uh, they're either a dark horse or an outsider. Okay, I think I think round of sixteen is a bit harsh for a bit low for Netherlands. So we'll, we, I think we should put them uh, dark horse. Yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah, players look out for obviously Van Dijk, De Jong, obviously Gakpo as well, um, and yeah. So yeah. But in my prediction, uh, I have them on. facing England in the last sixteen. Ooh, I haven't made my predictions yet, by the way. So I'll be making that after the final squads are announced. All right, let's move on to Austria. Ooh, Austria uh, for me. I really like this Austria team. Yeah, they're a dark horse. No doubt about it. Just uh, yeah. Despite the, yeah, the, their injuries. Yeah, their midfield's amazing. The defense is pretty good. Uh, the only issue I have with uh, the only issue is the injuries, like as you said. Because those injuries are crucial players. So, correct me if I'm wrong. Who, uh, is Alaba and Shagor going to miss the Euros? Or they is there still a chance they could play? It's just such a go. I think there's. I think it's unlikely that they play. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So for so uh, for Austria, Matt, if they can get those key players to play, then there is a great chance. Otherwise, it might have to be around a sixteen, which is unfortunate. All right, let's move on to Belgium. Uh, Belgium for me, I think Belgium is a team that could surprise people in the Euros. They could. You know, Dominic yeah. Tedesco, he's doing a good job with the team. The attack is looking good. My key issue, though, is that defensively, Belgium is still very it's still very sketchy. I don't like Belgium's defense. I still think it's too old. And um, I, I feel like for Belgium, a lot this will be very much a lot of players the first time um, playing the tournament. So the, in, the inexperience, you know. So I feel like for me, Belgium, I'll put them as like outs. I feel like they're maybe an outsider, I'll probably say. Yeah, that's why the, either the outsider or dark horse. I agree with that. I'm yeah. fine with either. 
It feels a bit I, I weird with Mass of Dark Horse since they are really strong on paper and uh, one of the highest ranked teams in the world. But uh, yeah, Outsider is fair. Yeah, yeah, Outsiders. Yeah. Obviously, players like KDB, Trussar, Onana. You know, there's a lot of young players and experienced players on the team. All right, moving on to Slovakia. Um, Slovakia is a uh, Slovakia for me. Is, is for me a round of 16 or group stage one. It's so tough because they're in a group with Romania. And for me, Slovakia and Romania, it's like they're all, they're very close, I think. Like, so it's really tough. But for me, oh, no, I think if you had to. Yeah, I'm going to put Slovakia. I think Slovakia is more likely round of 16 because of the fact they've been in the Euros before. And, you know, they have a good team. You know, at least on paper, you know, have screen ER. On these kind of players, and remember, Slovakia did play well in a very uh, did, did play, there was the only team in that group to lose to Portugal. I'm sorry, o only team to not lose to, only team that managed to get a result against Portugal. No, right? they lost to Portugal twice, but uh, they did it oh. in respectful fashion. Yes, in respectful fashion. Sorry, thank you for correcting me. Thank you for correcting me. That's so, fine. Yeah, hey, yeah, they're, I, I think they're, they're also the only team to score against Portugal. So that should that should tell you something. Okay, next up is Romania. Uh, Romania for me, man. Uh, defensively, they're good. Uh, but honestly, I don't really rate Romania that highly. I, I know people are going to tell me, look what they did in that group. That was not a very good group. That was a very underwhelming group. That might have been one of the most... That might be one of the most... I, I don't want to be harsh here, but <laughs> let's be real. That group was fairly weak. It might be one of the weakest groups of qualifiers. Yeah, and they're in an easy group now, again, at the final tournament. Yes, and b because of that, I yeah. mean, you have to say round of 16 max. But I still think they'll be eliminated in the group stage. But you should put them in the round of 16 max. Because, I mean, they can definitely win against Slovakia, like 1-0 or something, and then draw Ukraine. It wouldn't be crazy. Yeah, obviously, players look up for Haji, Dragosun. Uh, these are the two most um, notable players. I should so, yeah. also specify okay. that uh, that this is not my specific predictions. I'm just saying that it oh, yeah, yeah, could right. happen. Yeah, yeah. Th like th like I said, this is on our official predictions. It's just like a, we're doing the highest potential. So yeah. Okay, moving on to Ukraine. I like this Ukraine team. I think this Ukraine team is a. I think this Ukraine team looks solid. Um, they have definitely what it takes to be a dark horse, in my opinion. I like the team. They have Yarmichuk, Dobrik, um, Zinchenko. There's a lot of young talents in this Ukrainian team. And I feel like for me, for Ukraine, the only thing I would criticize is perhaps they did um don't, don't try to go behind too much of the Euros because let's be real, you're not gonna be it's gonna be hard to do comebacks every single time, you know. I know they were able to do the qualifiers, but the Euros is a different story. Euros is a much more difficult. So yeah, for me, I'm gonna put I I, I wanna put Ukraine dark horse. Do you agree with dark horse? One hundred percent. Yeah. They're good. And also, they've um, because of the invasion, they've been forced to play their matches away from home, which is uh, uh, tragic. But it also means that they've gotten used to it, which is uh, a benefit. So, I mean, they don't rely on home advantage to play well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Next is uh, Turkey. Uh, Turkey, for me, uh, the thing with Turkey is that I don't know what I make for this team because... I feel like this team could either very much disappoint very much again, like they did in the last Euros, or they can maybe surprise people. Yeah, so, I mean, Turkey are notoriously difficult to predict, but I think round of 16 of max is fair, even though Turkey, I mean, they will effectively play with home advantage in every match, since there is such a big uh, Turkish diaspora in Germany. Yeah, and yeah, obviously players like for us, Chalanahu, um, obviously, you got uh, Demerel as well. I just want have some other players at the top of my head, but these are probably the most known. But Chalna was probably the best player. Um, so, yeah. Okay, moving on to Georgia. Uh, Georgia, for me, it's tough with Georgia because I think Georgia have a chance to make the round of 16, but I think this group, it's tough to say with Georgia because I feel like Georgia, for me, this group is actually, I think this is a good group for Georgia, would you say? I mean, I don't think there is any group that's good for Georgia. They they are will be group stage fodder. They're just not good enough. They only qualified because UEFA uh, has a, a st stupid format. 
Okay, we got we got to be. Let, let's give them respect. Uh, you know, they, they they are good. They they got to the Euros. Whether they qualified here by weird means, they qualified at the end of the day. You know, but yeah, I mean, I think for Georgia, this is probably the best group they could have got of all the groups. Uh, but yeah, for Georgia, as I said, it's probably more like the round of sixteen exit. I mean, sorry, group stage exit because the team, you know, this is the first time ever playing the Euros. Obviously, players look out for is Kavrat Scalia, Mars Field. But yeah, I think that this team doesn't have enough talent compared to other three nations. So yeah, for me, Georgia is probably a group stage. Maybe they can make a round of sixteen, but nothing more than that. All right, uh, Portugal. I, I mean, I'm sorry, what are you saying? Yeah, Georgia George are definitely group stage footer. Yeah, we can move on now. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to Portugal, man. Portugal for me. I mean, the talent Portugal have is unbelievable. Uh, the team they have is unbelievable. Uh, the only concern I have with Portugal is I don't think they've been truly tested. And I feel like those big games, sort of like we kind of said with England, I feel like I'm not sure Portugal can win those high-pressure games, especially like from the quarterfinals onwards. You know? So I'll put Portugal for me. Portugal for me is a contender. I don't think there are favorites meant for me. Uh, I agree. They're, they should be a favorite with their squad. I, I, it's one of the three best squads in all of Europe. But uh, yeah, as you said, they have failed to prove themselves as uh, against strong teams. So they're nothing more than a contender. But they're definitely stronger now than when they won it in 2016. Oh, yeah, yeah. without a doubt, without a doubt. Uh, the final issue we got here, it is Czech Republic. Uh, this is a tough one for me, man, because Czech Republic for me, I feel like, I feel like, I mean, let me ask you this question. Do you think this team is worse than the last Euros? I think it's uh, about the same and they reached the quarterfinals, the but, um, I think uh, round of 16 max is where they belong. Yeah. I feel like Czech Republic for me, they were not that great in the groups, in the qualifiers, um, I think the only thing I was going for Czech Republic that I think could be crucial is um, Schick. Schick's been in really good form with Leverkusen. He's been scoring so many late goals. So maybe <laughs> he could transfer that here to the national team and score a lot of late winners. But realistically speaking, Czech Republic for me, I don't see them more than around 16. I think around 16 is the best. That's like generous, you know. So there you have it, man. All of our um, Euro 2024 nations. So as you can see, um, this is our fi uh, final tier list. And so, like I said, guys, this isn't our predictions, by the way. Uh, this is just we're going by highest potential. And obviously, in a few weeks' time, we're going to be doing our predictions. So thank you, National Team Football, for taking the time to do this with me. And yeah, any last thoughts from you before you head out? Uh, no, uh, it's it's a good tier list. I like it. Thanks for having yeah. me. Yeah, and um, there are some ones I have slight disagreements with, but I can agree with. So, you know, um, but like I said, guys, at the end of the day, um, this is just for fun. You know, like, it, it, like you know. And everything. So I hope you guys enjoy. Um, remember, guys, to like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out. And also remember, guys, to check out National Team Football channel, which I'll leave you the link in the description below. Seb Ball. I changed my name, but yes. Oh, sorry, Seb Ball. No, it's fine. All right, peace, guys.